How's it going guys, Lucas here. Let me introduce you to Splashy 5.0. As you can already see, it looks quite different than before. It probably reminds you of the new sub tools that Ini introduced currently. This new way of layout will help you um, to organize the Splashy projects a bit better and helps me to introduce new tools without making everything uh, cluttered up. The main solver sort of stays the same though. Um, there's not a huge difference except you won't have meshing in here anymore and you also don't have like the activate bubbles anymore in here because you don't have to activate them anymore. Um, they will be introduced automatically and you can use them further down the line. You can see all inputs are now colored. The first one is still your emitter, always blue, goes down the line. Um, the yellow one is the velocity, doesn't go down the line but you only need it in simulation anyways. Then you have your uh, bounding box, the one you see here currently outside, it's green. Also doesn't go down the line, but your collision actually goes down the line. You don't have to worry about bringing... You can see the first node down here is the splashy cache. So if you just type splashy, you will see splashy mesh, splashy cache, and the normal splashy, of course. Um, the splashy cache is pretty much just the file cache, but it helps you to compress your cache. Um, and also helps you to keep the attributes that you want to keep. Make sure to set the particle separation to the same you have on your simulation up here. They should match, otherwise the compression will not work properly. Um, type whatever attributes you want to keep. In this, in this case, I always keep velocity, p scale, id, and divergence, because they are like sort of needed down the line, but you can change it to your likings, of course start and end frame, steps, sub, sub steps, and the location where you want to save. Uh, if, you, if you save that, you can see you're already getting points back right away because it's like packed inside, but then unpacked again for you to use um, further down. It just saves you a bit of disk space this way. From here, we go to the splashy mesh. You can see no huge like difference to the tool you had before, but it's separate now and it makes things a bit more organized and a bit more easy and you can first start with your simulation and then do the meshing afterwards because the meshing takes so much time that I wanted to get it out of the main solver pretty much so you can have multiple versions of your sim and then do the meshing afterwards. Again, particle separation should pretty much ha match what you have here but of course you can change it as well if you, for example, want a bit of a thicker fluid and fill a bit more of the gaps. Uh, you can of course do this, especially if you want to do like a IQ mesh depost blend, because otherwise you will lose a lot of detail. So if I do that, that will calculate quite some time. Um, it's a bit slower than the other ones, but you can see now it's like a smooth mesh, but you don't lose like a lot of the overall shape. Um, if you go back to zero one, um, you will lose quite some some detail there. But yeah, this one is for like super smooth meshes anyways. Um, I would mostly go with one of the first options, of course. Then you have, as you had before, let me go back to standard. Um, maybe actually go a bit bigger here so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, the include mesh, so you can see the collision mesh is automatically subtracted from your mesh. So you don't have any like intersections between the two. And of course, the activate bubbles is here as well. Um, and this one, as I said before, you don't need to activate it in sim anymore. Um, it's in there all the time. And you can see there are tiny bubbles in here, uh, but of course you can make them bigger as well. Um, yeah, it gives you some bubbles in here. You have a bubble threshold, which pretty much allows you to keep more or less bubbles. Uh, you can go crazy and do bubbles everywhere pretty much. Um, it's a bit hard to see, you have to go to meshing pretty much or use like an alpha attribute um, or a glass shader to see it a bit better in viewport. But yes, that's pretty much it all for now. Um, I will introduce a lot more downstream tools uh, in the future and also add a few more tweaks and settings to the main solver um, as it is a bit cleaner now. I will probably get rid of like all the versions of the surface tension for example um, and introduce a few new things to make them a bit more stable faster and easier to tweak 
so you can keep droplets and things like that. Let me know if everything works. If you have any questions, hit me up in Discord or Patreon. And yeah, enjoy. See you soon.